everyone, this is Suzanne Spooner, QHHT Level 3 Practitioner in Des Moines, Iowa, and I am bringing you a new QHHT session segment. It is fabulous. This lady was so sweet. I loved, loved, loved working with her. She had a lot of questions, a lot of health issues going on in her body. She, for her whole life, has heard information coming in. Her left brain wanted to dismiss it. It liked to tell her that she was crazy. She honestly came in with the question, am I schizophrenic? Or is this information that I've always received, is that real? So bless her heart, that's the big deal of not knowing you know, how she is in her uh, mental health. So with that, we, um, we started in on her session. She has an amazing past life. It's, it's very abstract, not uh, the form of a physical body. She shapeshifts into many different things. And then about, oh gosh, 26 minutes in, she starts bringing through this group. Um, now this is a part of her. It's just a very large, high um, uh, level of beings. They call themselves the 11th dimensional beings. And we get into quite the conversation. Her, you can hear that her voice shifts. It's amazing. It's again, it's, it goes from a very soft um, human voice to more of a robotic voice. You'll hear exactly when that shift happens. It's quite fascinating. And then this information starts spilling forth. They are the. They say that we oversee the development of human consciousness. They created time, so we have a big, cool conversation about time and why it is and that, how that ties in to what they call the One Infinite Creator. Pretty fascinating. They also tell us about, um, oh my gosh, I never had received this information in a session before, about um, the design for the ending of time and why that will happen, what that will be like. Not scary. It's pretty cool. Um, so, anyways, we get to, we get to have, um, I guess, like a galactic um, news flash about the ending of time. Not for a long time, probably. Um, she explains that uh, she's not a human body, so we have to figure that one out. She says actually she's a prototype in energy of a fifth dimensional body and that she was one of the first ones to come in as this fifth dimensional body and they're using her kind of as their boots on the ground to see how things are going on in our world and how she's acclimating to everything. And again, her physical body was needing some help and where we normally would go into the body scan and you know they'll often say that they're going in and they're looking at an organ or a part of the body and they're they're healing it this way, or they're dissolving something, or they're moving something. This was not like that. This was viewed from a very high perspective and not so much as a physical body. Sometimes it's really, those higher beings have a hard time relating to our physical vehicles. So we go into her operating systems to, to do the healing and the repairing. It was, it, was, it was fascinating. I had to think quick on my feet on this one, uh, but they're fun. Those are the ones I really love. Uh, let's see here. What else do I have for you about this one? They talk about the reevaluation and restoration of planet Earth and kind of where we're at with, with all of these big changes that we're seeing. Her purpose in this life, they say, is to test the viability of the 5D human prototype. So with that, we find that she's not schizophrenic that they've been trying to communicate with her and that now she can validate this information and not be afraid of it, not be um, devaluing herself, which was a conversation that we had about all of us. Is one of the big problems that we earthlings do is we diminish ourselves and that creates problems throughout everywhere. We need to knock that off and be very happy with who we are and what we're here to do. So anyways, it's, it's fascinating. It's, uh, the conversation was kind of like on that level of Beverly and the designer series, the designer of our reality simulations. If you've listened to those session segments that I've had, uh, interesting information from a very high perspective. Interesting. You'll hear, um, you'll hear this, this very high level group. I guess they are. They, they say that 
they call themselves we. So lots of conversations about trying to understand from their perspective. I think at one point she even says, um, like, you're not, you can't comprehend, you know, the answer to that question, which to me is always, uh, well, try me, you know, I wanted, I want to try and figure it out. I, maybe I won't, but I would like to at least have the information so I can ponder it. So we do a few of those throughout the session. It's a brain expander on this one. And I'm so grateful to the client. I'm so happy, happy, happy that at the end of the session, she felt relieved that she wasn't making all of this stuff up throughout her life, that she can validate all this great knowledge that comes in through her. Oh, and they, this, I can't remember exactly how to phrase this one. She's a spaceship in this physical body. They view her as a spaceship here on earth. <laughs> so that was fun. I gave, I gave a spaceship a big hug at the end of the session. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have the best job. Okay, that's it. Um, you can find me at Suzanne Spooner, QHHT.com. I hope you enjoy the session. I'm very, very grateful to my client for allowing me to share it with you. Have a great day. See you later. What's the very first thing that you notice? Just so it's dark, like reds and dark. It dark and what? And and this red colors. Oh, tell me about the red colors. It's desolate. It's it's a dark place. Is it all around or just in a certain area? It just feels very sad. Very sad? Why does it feel very sad? There's no light. Okay. And why do you think there's no light? There's no beings here. No beings? No. And why are there no beings? I guess We haven't created them. Okay. That's interesting. So as you look out around you, does it change or does it still stay dark with the reds? It's just a sad, dark place. Okay. And how do you perceive yourself? What do you like? seem to look like a big black bird. A big black bird. Tell me all about what you look like. It just looks like a big eagle of some sort. It is black wings. Um, Big, big, much bigger than anything around it. Okay. And your face, how would you describe that? Sort of like a dragon. Like a dragon? Tell me all about that.
is shifting into some type of dragon. It's just mean. It's angry. And why does it shift to the angry dragon? I don't know. Does the bird body remain at all or does that shift as well? Well, the whole thing is shifting now. It's just becoming like this big octopus kind of thing. I would describe that. It just has like many arms. Like an octopus, exactly. And no. Hmm. Do you get a sense of why you shift from the dragon body to the octopus-like body? No. Do you perceive things the same or differently? Something is being sent off. Um, in some kind of ship, spaceship is going. Oh, tell me what the spaceship is like. It's just like a regular spaceship. being sent out of this place. So are you going with the spaceship or are you separate from it? I'm not sure. So you see the ship and then what happens? There's a portal, a tunnel. And describe what the portal is like. Some lights, some color, it's it's it has everything has to be gone through there. Um <clears throat> there's a lot of coming and going through that portal. So do you go through that portal then? Yeah. And what does it feel like for you as you go through? It just starts crushing you. It starts getting tighter and tighter. Tighter and tighter? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of other things in the portal with you or are you just aware of yourself? Well, now there's this man on a horse kind of like a it's a white horse it's um he looks like some kind of knight or a king or something like that and what part resembles a man or does it i'm sorry i may not have understood it that. is it is it is a man on a horse a man on a horse okay and you said it appears to be like a like a king Yes. And what makes him appear that way to you? 
I, I can see him, but uh, well, I, not, I can't see him anymore. But there's, um, no, it's just so much, there's just a lot of light and, um, it doesn't, I just feel it in my body. What do you feel in your body? Everything. everything do you shift again or do you stay in that form of the octopus no I'm just light just light okay and are you still in the portal or have you come out I'm still there, but now there's some other beings, and uh, they kind of look like superheroes. Oh, tell me all about them. They're just coming out. I don't know if they're walking in or coming out. You can never tell. Um, they're like superheroes. In what way? They got all these powers and all this information, and... They're just able to do so many things. And do you interact with them or not? Oh, they're starting to look like anime. Okay. And just describe for me what you notice now. Nothing, nothing else. They're just um, anime characters like Captain America and like Guardians of the... That's it, Guardians of the Galaxy. And so what happens next? I guess we gotta go save this planet. Okay. And tell me all about going to save that planet. It's going to be messed up. We might not return. And why wouldn't she return, do you think? Some will never remember who they were. They will be lost. And so is there any preparation for you and the others to help save the planet or what is that like? Nothing could prepare us for this. So it's you and the superhero beings that are going to this planet to help save it? Is that right? Yes. Okay. What do you notice as you're getting closer to the planet? There's many more. We're not alone. It's epic. Tell me all about that, about it being so epic. It's just that
we know we will lose everything. But we have to go and recover some pieces of ourselves, of each other. And why is it important to recover pieces of yourselves? Because we are one. We cannot remain separated forever. And so then what do you do? What happens next? I'm hearing the studio makes its first move. I don't know what that means. Say that again. The studio makes its first move. And tell me about the studio. I don't know what that means. There's just all this energy. What's the energy like? It's very bright. Coming from the right side corner of my head. And so are all of you at the planet now? We're looking at it from above. How does it appear to you as you're looking at it from above? It's pretty. It's a big big, pretty planet. And that light is coming around you. Where does it go? That light is still on the top right corner of my, above my head. What do you know about that light? I'm not sure, but I think it's always going to remain there. It's um, like navigation system. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Tell me what you know about the navigation system. You can never really get lost. You can always go back to the... You can always go back and connect with it. It'll, it'll let you know where you are. Oh, nice. Okay. So you're there looking at that beautiful planet. You're there to retrieve pieces of each other yourselves. And then what do you do? Um, I'm actually here in this table here. I I am laying here. But as you focus back on that planet, you're there to do a job. And what what happens next? I 
I can't tell. There's just chaos. There's um, there's black feathers. There's black birds again. Um, there's a lot of confusion. What's causing the confusion there? Mortality. Can you explain that a little more? It's something we never dealt with. Mortality. It's just very dark and chaotic. And so you and the others, the superheroes, what do you guys do next? Something is beating. It has to beat. Oh, it's sending a signal. We have to keep it. Hearing it beating. It it's like a. It's like a heart. Beating like a heart. Yes. Oh. And tell me more about what's beating like a heart. It informs, it informs everyone. <clears throat> it has to keep, um, like, um, it has to keep beating, it has to keep broadcasting the signal. It says it has to broadcast the signal to all the Spentas. All the what? Spentas. It's a word I <clears throat> know, but <clears throat> the spentas. So it's transmitting that signal to the spentas? Yes. Okay, and then what happens? There's this feeling of um, something is. There's like a. I see like a casino machine. Something is just playing a game. Um, gambling. So, what do you think about that? Confused. I don't like it. What do you think that means, that casino game? The universe is spinning. <coughs> oh, the universe is spinning. Everything is spinning. Um, spinning faster and faster, and uh, 
something or someone. It's just a gamble. Anything could happen. All possibilities? Yeah. And so what do you do next? Well, um, allow me to take the time to express myself correctly. This is not easy for me. You're doing a great job. Just keep letting those first thoughts come through. What do you notice next? In the beginning, it was all very squared. And there were many things we did not foresee happening. It is now our responsibility to fix the situations we did not oversee. And how do you go about fixing them? Methods are varied. Too complicated to explain in your language. Just do the best you can. We want to learn. We oversee the development of human consciousness using metrics and tools uncomprehensible to you. And how do you do that? We are infiltrated within the spaces in between every atom. We connect all things to each other. And when you connect all things to each other, then what happens? We are able to monitor its development. Monitor what? Its development. Okay. And so what are you observing with all of this work that you're doing? The one infinite creator still has a lot to know about itself. It is a task most challenging. And so what do you want us to understand about your task the most? We have given it a word. It is love. Well, we know that word. We, that's a very special high frequency word for us. The way you understand love is not the way we understand love. Love to us is the gift giving the gift to infinite intelligence to know itself through its creation. Infinity wants to know itself. So is that why we broke off into all these different souls to have all these different experiences for infinity to know itself? Yes. 
So how are we doing with all that? Shockingly well. <laughs> Why shockingly well? Humans have challenged the universe on many levels. There are many factors in here which we never considered. What are some of those factors? The extent to which a piece of the Infinite One Creator would go to defend and protect its own point of view. And what have you learned from that? We had had to accommodate for allowing each and all of the expressions to have their own point of view without infringing upon them. Is this what we call free will? Or is it different? Free will is quite relative. Respecting each expression of the one infinite being in relationship to another is the basis for knowing each other. So are you saying in the separateness we're knowing the completeness? Much hardship has been brought about because pieces and parts of the one infinite creator have caused much grief to others. We have tried to stop some pieces or parts from doing this, but it has not been good. We cannot subtract from anyone the expression of their being. And is this experience throughout the cosmos? Or is this mostly on Earth? Where is the focus at? We recognize the need for clarification. Currently, we are unable to offer any more. Understood. Okay, thank you for that. Um, can I ask, how does this relate to the one you're speaking through? She will need to come to terms with the fact that she volunteered to be here in a time such as this. It is part of the process of being implanted in a timeline. without any way to go back. Is that similar to what she was feeling when you were showing her that um, portal that she wouldn't be going back? Yes. And the superheroes, um, what did they represent to her? These are the ones who came here first.
and set up the conditions for this experiment. And tell us about the experiment as you understand it. It has puzzled us as well, but we were commissioned to do so. The consciousness of the one in complete separation from itself. Made no sense at first. Does it make more sense to you now? We can understand why. This has been a great idea. And now, why would you say it's a great idea? What do you understand more about it now than you did originally? One gets to know everything. If you look at it from as far away as possible. and break it into its smallest parts. And so as you look at it from far away, what do those smallest parts look like to you? No matter how far the pieces and parts of the one infinite creator go. They remain intact and able to reunite with the whole. And the unexpected issues that you spoke about earlier how does that get resolved? That is why we created time. Oh. Tell us more about why you created time. To solve issues. Oh. <laughs> it's a matter of design. It will all be completed. And what was it like to create time, I wonder? It was regarded as a monstrous idea. <laughs> Why so? The magnitude of this illusion is unbelievable when you are outside of it. And the illusion, what can you share with us about that? It was designed to loop again and again to create space to have experiences, to resolve problems and issues, and to give each expression of the one infinite being the opportunity to experience itself in all its aspects without concern. And so how is that playing out? We also designed a program that ends time. Oh, tell me all about that. Once a sufficient amount of experience has been 
reached. We have the signs. The end of the experience of time as it is. And what will that be like? It has to be gradual and softly introduced so as not to shock the expressions of the one infinite creator. That's so interesting. I've not heard about that before. Is there more information you could please share about that? Time has been <clears throat> an extraordinary gift from infinite intelligence. We had a task, but did not know how to accomplish it. We were given permission to design an idea of time. to create the opportunity to accomplish Infinite One Creator's commission work. It is not to be discussed at length, especially by beings who are having the experience of time. It is not conducive to their well development and adjustment. Okay, understood. We're just very curious. We'd like to learn. You call yourself um, the ones who oversee the development of human consciousness, the designers of these time experiments. Is that right? In a way, <clears throat> you could put it that way. Is there a name that you call yourselves that do the work th that you discussed? We are the 11th dimensional beings. But we are non-local. Meaning what? We are everywhere. In all spaces. At every moment. And so you've created the, the concept of time, um, the illusion. What else are you creating and working with? The re-evaluation and restoration of planet Earth. Tell me as much as you can about that. We're very curious. It has been our pleasure to serve you. We have been challenged by your peoples. There are many contributions you have made to the universe. We are very grateful to you. What are some of those contributions that people on Earth have made to the universe, I wonder? Like we said before, the extent to which your peoples will go to defend a point of view has been unheard of in the rest of the universe. You have shown us different degrees of emotions we were not aware of. We appreciate your expression greatly. We look forward to assisting you in the further development of your expression once you end your experience of time Interesting. And so you spoke about the reevaluation and restoration of planet Earth. Can you share more about that, please? Sure. 
your commitment to yourselves needs to be greater so that we might be able to assist you in your efforts. We cannot help you. Technically, we cannot help you, but We set up the conditions for you to do it. Help yourself. And what conditions have you set up so that we can help ourselves? These are numerous. We are constantly monitoring things that would otherwise cause you great problems. You are not aware of our intervention in your world. We are responsible for you, but you are always free to plunge into oblivion if that is what you choose. From our perspective right now on the Earth, it feels um, very unstable, lots of changes. Um, from your perspective, what is it like? We are very excited for you. We are cheering for you. You are like a crazy autistic child that everyone loves. We look forward to welcoming you into the multiverse. You will be very well received. We have collected many of your expressions and they are truly treasured by us. And so how can we help ourselves get to that point of being welcomed into the multiverse? Stop diminishing yourselves first. The rest of the universe wants you to be seen. But you feel shame for yourself and non-acceptance. We want to ask you to remember that the one infinite creator does not have any parts or pieces of itself that are not worthy of the utmost admiration and love. And once we are to that point of being welcomed into the multiverse, what will our experiences be like then? It will be hard for you to believe you lived in a manner such as this, but you will go and create other worlds with us as well. Is this what we're referring to on the planet as the shift or is this something different? It is part of the process of creation. It is infinite. Very good. Wow. What else can you share with us with the knowledge that you carry? This instrument is fighting. Oh, she's doing a good job. She's helping her calm her mind, letting this information come through. She's doing a wonderful job, isn't she? Would it be okay if I went ahead and started asking her questions? Can you answer those for her? Yes. All right, thank you for that. Now, um, would it be appropriate to ask for a scan of her body? She has some physical issues going on.
something in the head. Okay, and what do you see going on with her head? I am not able to explain what is happening. Can you bring in somebody who can explain to us what is happening? Allow me the time to. I shall help you. Nice, okay. So we just are wanting to scan her body, looking for areas that are requesting healing and repair. We do expect full and complete healing today. So where is it that you are focusing at first? There are many parts of this body that are in great that are distress. In distress, yes. What do you want her to understand about that? A single acknowledgement of the perfection of the one infinite creator will restore everything to its natural state of perfection. So you'd like her to give that acknowledgement to the one infinite creator? Is that correct? She does. Allow me. <clears throat> Allow me the time. Allow you more time, is that right? Yes. Okay. Take as much time as you need. Just if you can describe what's happening in that time, it'd be so knowledgeable for us to understand. It is not a human body. Oh, tell us more about that. It is a come. It is a breathing experiment. A what experiment? Other genetical material. It is a test. It has created a suffering for the recipient. It is our responsibility to make her feel comfortable in this vehicle. And you said not a human body, but made of other genetic material. Did I hear that right? Yes. Can you explain that to her just a little bit more so she can understand? She knows. Can you explain it a little more so I can understand? We have been testing the light coefficient of vessels. Humans 
We're not capable of assimilating higher vibrations. This vehicle has been testing the limits of the amount of infinite intelligence a human vessel can assimilate. And how is she doing with all that testing? It has ranged from excellent to quite poorly. She's had a lot of physical issues and suffering that she's had to deal with with this body. Could you address that for her, please, so that she can understand it and move forward? We are going to address this. We ask that she stop harming herself as much as possible. What does she do that harms herself so she's fully aware? Isolates rejects, condemns, and shames her body. And why do you think she does that? This is not a human body. And the vessel does not know how to explain that. But it has been slowly disclosed to her. And when she fully understands that, how does that change her experience? It is our prototype for the next evolution in human consciousness. Tell her more about being that next prototype. It will be able to hold more light and draw inspiration and information from the one infinite creator at larger speeds and quantities without distortion. And how does she best work with that? She has helped us understand the limits and the nuances. So you've learned a lot from her having this experience? She does not exist. This is our vessel. The personality does not exist but in her head. This is our vessel. We command her. You command her? Yes. Okay. Do you think she'll be okay with that understanding? She knows. Okay. And using this vessel as she moves forward in her time in it, how does she best help serve what you're trying to um, discover through her. Keep eating pizza. Oh. <laughs> Why is it good for her to keep eating pizza? It is just something that people like. Okay. So it kind of helps her to be more human-like? Yes. Okay. And why is that good for her? Because that is what she must be here human-like. Yes. Okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay. Um, but about the health issues that she's had within the vessel, what can be done to help her 
to heal those. She'd like to have a vessel that has no pain, no discomfort. I know all things are possible. What can you do to help her with that? At the moment when she requested energy and help, we provided the updates have to be achieved and the vessel will be updated. The autoimmune diseases are not her fault. This instrument is not compatible with Earth. But yet she's living this time on Earth <clears throat> in her perception. So what can be done to help her um, integrate that and, and live a, a, a well-feeling life? She has done wonderfully. We are very grateful. We need to explain. This is a vessel. It is not a person. And this is because she's the prototype of what's to come, is that right? One of them, yes. Okay, but when she talks about the pain and the numbness in her hands and feet, what we call neuropathy, she would like to be able to touch the ground and not feel burning through the feet or the hands. What can be done to help her there? We'd like her to be comfortable in this vessel. The operating systems have been disclosed to her. She is able and we are able to resolve these issues. And you're doing that for her, is that right? What is changing in the operating system to help her there? We need to make sure that the vessel is well adjusted. And how do you do that? We monitor the amount of excitement or boredom and the willingness to adapt to our new operating system. Okay, and so how does she help herself adapt to that new operating system? She is quite rebellious. <laughs> and why do you think that is? Because we made her that way. Oh, <laughs> does that help? Not in this situation. Okay. She needs help, but she will not allow anything to help her. She mentioned that there's, throughout her life, she feels like she can take care of everything herself and doesn't need outside assistance, so to speak. She has the back door code to every single code and file we have for this vessel. Okay, and how does she utilize that to have uh, the best experience possible for her and as she's in the vessel. She doesn't. She just complains. Okay. But she'd like to understand. She doesn't having physical pain isn't a very pleasant experience in a in That a, was an experience that was necessary as well. And why so? Because it shows us what happens to unawareness in those situations. Okay. But you're aware that her physical discomfort is hard for her to experience while she's in this experience? Or are you not?
the light coefficient is greater in her light body than in her physical body. The physical body needs to adjust to the light. Great, okay. And so, how does that happen? It happens naturally or with conscious effort. And how can she help herself to adjust so that she's in alignment with her uh, light body? She can get to work and stop complaining and saying she does not know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> it's just so she understands clearly and she, and she knows how to do it. What would you share with her about what she knows? This vessel contains the codes for the new evolutionary version of human. It has all on its own the codes and files to update itself. In that manner, we will not help her do this for her. Because the new human has to help itself. There are no saviors. Oh, I think we can appreciate that, but we're just helping her to understand how she helps herself. She unlocks the packs of information and applies it as pertinent. Okay, and how does she unpack those packets of information specifically? It takes a little bit of research in sacred geometry and mathematics okay is she aware of that consciously already or is that something new for her she knows okay when she unlocks that in sacred geometry and mathematics then what will happen for her she will retrieve the information needed to update the operating system for this vessel Okay, and then what will her experience be like? The new upgraded human of 5D. Perfect, okay. And do you help guide her with that? Or is this something she does solely on what's perceived as her own? We are her. Right. We are just observing this vessel express in this timeline with the amount of information that it has available. Perfect. Understood. Thank you for that. So when she would like to have healing and understanding about the uh, vitiligo that um, covers her skin, the discoloration, what can you share with her about that? The non-compatibility of our system has been detrimental to the vessel. We are working on the issues. Nice. And as you resolve the issue, what will she notice? best is yet to come. <laughs> and what do you mean by the best is yet to come? This vessel will be updated and recycled to embody other updated versions of itself. Oh nice. When will she notice that?
We <coughs> cannot express it in your time. Will it be within this vessel's lifetime, as we call it? Some updates will happen in this lifetime, but this vessel is meant to express itself in a much higher expression than this. We are looking forward to expressing this version of human in a different setting. Like, finally, being able to drive a Ferrari correctly. Oh, nice. Okay. A well, well-tuned machine, it sounds like. And so when she asks about her fibro fibromyalgia and her rheumatoid arthritis and resolving those issues, what can you share with her? Central command has been a updated or notified of the issue. It will be taken care of. All right. And what can she do to help support those updates as they happen? As usual. Her only and most important contribution and responsibility is to enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, okay. No more complaining? Correct. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, she was able to sense energy with her body and then that seemed to go away from her perception. She would like to have that sensing of energy restored. The system might <clears throat> look like it's <clears throat> going into entropy, but it is actually changing operating system. And when it changes the operating system from one to the other, what will she notice? The old ways are not like the new ones. It does not mean her abilities have disappeared. She asks for all negative imprinting during her second pregnancy to clear from her and the child if the child accepts? We shall address that issue when the moment comes. Is there anything about that pregnancy that you want her to understand more deeply? There was nothing wrong with it, but the child was not compatible with her genetic material. It is from a very different race, but she volunteered to steward this being in this moment. Is there anything about their connection that you want her to understand more about or with it, with any of her children? This carries on with the updating operating system of the new hybrid human.
And you said there's more like her as well? They are mostly young. She is the old one. Okay. And the, the younger ones, um, are they similar to her operating system or different? Because she gave us the understanding of this version. We were able to design the new prototypes. So it's just evolving as it goes? Not evolving. Everything is already evolved. Okay, cool. She would like the ability to command to rejuvenate her body two years for every one year. Of course she would because she is full of life and wants to enjoy life. We have no objection to it and shall implement it. She would like to resolve all leg symptoms, the jerking, the movement that happens all over. We are very grateful to this vessel. Anything and everything that needs to happen for its comfort, we shall give. Oh, nice. Okay, so when she wants to um, stop smoking, she doesn't want to crave cigarettes anymore. She wants the body to be healthier. Um, can you help her no longer want a cigarette anymore? Yes. That is easy. Nice. So after this session, she will no longer have another cigarette? Is that what you're saying? We make this vessel responsible for its own choices, but we can guarantee that that will not be an issue anymore. Nice. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, she asks about her eyesight. She wants to have clear eyesight far and close to her. Vision correction on their way. Um, she talks about sneezing compulsively. This has happened since she was a little girl. Why, why that and what can be done to help her with it? The expression was not conducive or able to adapt to this planet completely. The autoimmune results were damaging. As the operating system updates, all of these issues will subside. Anything else about the physical vessel that you want to work on or want her to know more about? We are very grateful for this entity and the soul group that inhabits and connects it to the one infinite creator. We are eternally grateful for the opportunity to test our 5D prototype with this vessel. 
Thank you for that. Well, I'm gonna move over to her personal life questions then. Um, she would like to have permission to activate her Akashic record and disclose. Granted. <clears throat> what will she notice differently because of having that access? She will realize that everything she has ever thought to be made up by her, it is actually us speaking to her. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very cool. That merge that we were talking about earlier, where she can access all this information all on her own. Is that what you're discussing? Yes. Excellent. Okay. She would like to know what caused the experience where something entered her heart area, kept coming back and radiating until her body felt non-localized or shattering. I am not at liberty to discuss that. Oh, can I ask why? It would be heartbreaking for the vessel. Well, she does wonder about that, um, why she didn't get clarification about it, even when she asks for that. At the moment, the vessel was going through an emotionally intense time. We had to rearrange the subatomic particles of the entire system. And that's where she felt non-localized, like she had shattered? Yes. And so how was she different after that happened from before it happened? It was distressful to her. We could not disclose that she is like a machine that we keep updating and upgrading. But she was not going to make it. What do you mean she was not going to make it? She was being hacked and inhabited by other entities and was looking for a place or a way to terminate itself. Is this when she was suicidal? Yes. And so from your perspective, how did that get resolved so that she stay with this vessel? We took over her heart center. And how did that affect the others that were trying to also be there? I don't understand your question. You said that there were others that were trying to come in and occupy? Or did I understand that incorrectly? No, we did not. This is not a walk-in. Oh, she has a question about that. So she is not a walk-in? She can integrate with a walk-in at the speed of light. No one can tell the difference. Tell her more about that. It is the whole point of the human 
evolutionary state of fifth and sixth dimension. So when she asks, will she or has she already integrated with her walk-in, what would you share with her about that? We are sorry to inform you that information is not pertinent to you at this moment. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just asking her questions. Thank you for that information. She also asks about the dream that she had where she was informed about the dead king um, and that she was to come claim the throne. Can you give clarity on that, please? The soul group to which she belongs has long been waiting for her to come back. We are aware. This is a most amazing warrior. She has a kingdom to tend to. We shall provide the necessary arrangements for her return. And tell her more about her soul group and this kingdom that she presides over. I hear Narnia, but it doesn't make any sense. And her soul group, what is best for her to understand about that group? It is an exquisite world of loving beings who are the cedars of the multiverse. We have been very blessed to be given one of these souls to implant in our vessel. The name is not important. So um, she asks for permission to connect and establish contact with her future self on a regular basis or permanently. In this instance, it is not her future self which needs to re-establish contact with her. It is her past, but there is no past, no future, so she just needs to readjust to having the awareness of her infinite self. And how does she best do that? The road less traveled is the most fun. We shall oversee each of her steps. She is not abandoned. She would like to know what collective is she connected to and channels most of the time. The Arturian Collective. And what does she need to know about the Arturian Collective? <coughs> they are like the grandfathers of everyone. We have great respect for them. They don't really have enemies. She wants to know what caused her night dreams to be increasingly gray and rudimentary. The operating system was being hacked. By whom? Dracos. Has that been repaired? 
It has been addressed. How, I'm just curious, how do you address something like that? We are both inside and outside of you. We can connect and disconnect anything with everything else. Why would they want to hack her dreams? Dreamtime was being updated for 5D integration. The Drakers wanted to have a way to hack that field. But as you said, it's been repaired now? That channel has been disabled. And she was curious why for about eight months her dreams were in the form of anime, which she isn't really even interested in, in her awake state. She knew that it was because the operating system was under maintenance and something had to be put in its place. But we did not want the vessel to be exposed to the hacked material. And we thought it would be funny if we fed Anime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, she is curious about, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Jenga, and if it's a good method to interface with her higher self or infinite intelligence. Shunga is an amazing tool for self-discovery and exploration. We are grateful they found a way to synthesize it. And she wonders, does it have any negative distortions or issues? Not that we know of, but the universe is infinite. One should always be aware of what one encounters. How does she best prepare herself to have the highest and best experience for her when she uses that? Go fearlessly. But with an open heart, maintain always sobriety. And do not disclose her trips to others. Why is that important for her? It would make it vulnerable to other energies unneeded. And her level of awareness is not conducive to the peace of mind of other beings. Thank you. She wonders why her third eye has gotten worse and worse, and she would like to have that restored. Don. What will she notice differently with her third eye open and restored? She will see 360 degrees. Oh my, will she notice that right away? Yes. 
Okay. And why was it getting worse and worse before you restored it? Hacking. Hacking. Okay. Is there anything that she can do going forward to ensure that she does not get hacked in her operating system any longer? That is our job. Okay. She wonders why can't she seem to be able to connect with the Ascended Master Jesus? Because we took an oath to know ourselves and to never follow whatever we accomplish has to be on our own and our understanding. The Jesus figure is a lovely one, but it has created millions of slaves. who do not want to take responsibility for themselves. And so why do you think that happened? It was a twist. No one saw it coming. So the Son and Master Jesus, was that his intention or not? Never in a million light years. Okay. And how did that twist occur, I wonder? The beings of the other places. The... the The feelings of the other places? They took his message and used it against the people to enslave them. Oh, okay. I understand. Thank you. So where is humanity at currently with that enslavement, would you say? It is in the process of gaining awareness of its rightful place and the old structures are losing their power. And how do they lose their power? People get tired of suffering and look for the truth instead of the answer from someone else. Oh, nice. And when that occurs, what happens then? Liberation and restoration to sanity and freedom in the natural state of the one infinite creator. And is that part of this illusion and experiment that we are in? We are carrying out many experiments here, but the one thing that cannot be experimented on is the love of the one infinite creator. That cannot be proven or disproven. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you for that. She would like permission to disable negative etheric implants meant to cause chaos and confusion. We will, we would like her to get involved in Dismantling, disabling, dehabilitating, 
etheric implants placed upon the bodies of humans. We will show her how to do this. Oh. And she may be curious as she listens to this, how, how does that occur? How does that happen? Because she communicates with us, we can show her how to disable these implants. And can you share with her how that happens? I know you say you will show her, but can you explain that to her? Once you understand circuitry and the relationship of one organ or thing to another in a specific position, you will be able to dismantle this dispositive Thank you for that. How do you think she'll integrate all this information you've given her about being this prototype um, of the new 5D human, um, being a vessel? How do you think she'll take all this information in? She will be angry because This is all stuff we have already disclosed to her. But she thinks she makes it all up. Do you think this will help her to accept it? We will have to up our game. And how will you do that? We will make it very clear to her that what we have said here is not her imagination. When she accepts that, how will it change things for her? We will be able to commission her to carry out a few tasks. Like disabling implants. Nice, so she'll be a clear channel for your information and be able to implement that? She already is a clear channel. She just does not want to cooperate and do anything with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you think this will help her to do that now? We are hoping so. I am hoping so too. It sounds like very important work. What would you say her purpose as this vessel is? To test the viability of the 5D human prototype before it is implemented do you think that will surprise her or no she knows okay all right what else is important for her to know There is much work to do. We would like her cooperation as soon as she stops doubting herself. 
How often would you recommend that she listens to this recording to get the most benefit? Whenever she has doubts. And when she has doubts and she listens to her recording, how will that help her? She has been confused and angry about the whole thing. But we have explained to her in a different way that this is the way it had to be done. We needed a body to monitor the human evolution in a manner of speaking. This is our space shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is very cool. Uh, wow, okay. What has surprised you most about monitoring her and her experiences here? The opportunity to witness the evolution of humans in real time as it happens as if one of us were here. The ability to become a part of you without really being so. Is it like looking out of her eyes and feeling what she feels or how is it for you? She knew we showed her this is our camera. <laughs> and when she decided to have this appointment, what were you hoping she received from it? We want her to stop hiding and doubting herself. And the sarcasm could stop too. Okay. Why would that be helpful? That is her defense mechanism. In part, this is our space shift. We monitor the planet from this point of view. But her soul we cannot command. And this being is quite rebellious. Were you expecting it to be this rebellious? It had to be rebellious. Otherwise, it would not have dared do this. Okay. All right. Gosh. This has been a fabulous conversation. Thank you for all the information that you're giving us. How is it for you to speak through her today? We are happy to assist you. She needs to acknowledge that in several occasions she has started making the contact with us and speaking in this manner. In a manner of speaking, there is no difference between us and her. This has been a great accomplishment. When she was preparing to come here, were you preparing for the experience as well? Or what was that like for you? We knew this day would come. We knew this moment would arrive. We have been preparing for it. There is nothing that escapes our planning. And what was the planning like for you?
We are always ready. We did not need to prepare ourselves for this encounter. <laughs> Understood. That's that. <laughs> Understood. Thank you. All right. Gosh, anything else that you can think of that's important to impart before I bring her back up? She wants to know if she is part of the Ra Collective. We would like to assist her in this understanding. I'm sure she would appreciate that. What can be done to help her? It goes beyond the Ra Collective. But we are all one. Can I clarify, are you saying like the Ra Collective, R-A, or is it, am I hearing that wrong? Yes. Okay, thank you for that. Does she, has she read about like the, the Book of Ra? Or does she have awareness of that? All of it. Okay. Okay, of course. Okay. Um, do you have a final message that you would like to give to her before I bring her back up? It has been our honor to establish this communication. We now leave you <laughs> in the love and light of the one infinite creator. There is nothing to fear. We knew it was going to be difficult. But our commitment to helping the infinite creator know itself never changes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you have shared with us today. It's so deeply appreciated. Thank you. All right. And now I am asking this wonderful collective, this group to merge, return, receive to where it belongs with so much love and thanks for the help and information it's been giving Alexandra today. I know she's really going to appreciate it. I want the aspect from the other life that we were speaking with to also recede to the time where it belongs with so much love and thanks for the information it has given us. We bring that forward as a curiosity to learn from, to have information from, to help apply to this present lifetime. And that way it is also very valuable and holds great importance. As Alexandra listens to this recording, goes over the material, puts it into place, it will not bother her in any way, mentally or physically. That is very important. will not bother her in any way, mentally or physically. Now, I want all the consciousness and personality of Alexandra to once again return and fully integrate back into this body completely. Now, all the consciousness and personality of Alexandra is once again fully integrated back into this body, replacing all the other parts that we are speaking to. Now, I want Alexandra to move up, up, up through time and space and orient yourself back into this present day and time. Today is September 1st, 2021, and you're lying here in my office in Des Moines, and you just had a very interesting experience. And I want you to remember that the present life you are living now is the most important life of all because it is the one that you are focused on at this present time. Any information we can find in this way is valuable, but it will not bother you in any way mentally or physically as you understand it and put it into place. That is very important. It will not bother you in any way. Oh. Go ahead and leave your eyes closed for just mm -hmm. a minute. Now, in a moment, I'm going to count to 10, and on the count of 10, you'll be wide awake, feeling wonderful all over, as though you've had a nice nap, a nice sleep. You will feel truly rested and refreshed. You'll be able to assimilate, trust this information you've given yourself. 
Listening to your recording will be something you enjoy doing and each and every time you do, you'll receive new and deeper information, a stronger connection to this beautiful group that you have through you. Now, follow me up as we go and on the count of 10, you'll be wide awake, feeling wonderful all over. One, two, you're beginning to breathe a little faster. Your blood is beginning to circulate a little faster because you're beginning to wake up now. Three, four, you're becoming aware of the physical body, very much aware of the physical body. You can move your arms and legs around to get the muscles working and the blood circulating because it gets tiring laying in one position like that. We're getting everything moving again because you're very much aware of the physical body. You're focused on it now because you're beginning to wake up now. Five, six, you're becoming aware of the sounds in the room and the sounds outside of the room. You're very much aware of your physical surroundings. You're oriented back here in this time, in this place, and you're beginning to wake up now. Seven, eight, you're coming up very nicely now, very nicely. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, feeling wonderful mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, my friend. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like you've been laying there a long time or a short time? Long. Oh my gosh, long, 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 long time. If you had to guess, how long does it feel like? Oh, I don't know, like five hours. <laughs> it wasn't quite five hours, no. <laughs> About two hours. Oh my gosh, my body. What do you recall? Oddly enough, I can I can recall everything. Okay. Tell me about, as we started off, um, what you were experiencing then. So cool. As we started off? Mm -hmm. Well, once we started um, off the... Um, yes, you didn't even get to the cloud. This is so funny. Do you remember the very first things that you were aware of? I was just going into that cloud, and, and then I think I fell asleep, actually, because I didn't hear anything you said after that okay. and then you were just asking me if I could picture a pretty place somewhere okay yes do you remember what that place was like oh um, yeah it was dark and eerie and, and abandoned and just undeveloped do you remember what you were like there I was just like this black bird mean yeah. <laughs> big right do yeah you, do you remember how you changed Yeah, I guess we were like superheroes. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit in between that. Um, do you remember shift shaping into an angry dragon? Yeah. And then uh, to an octopus? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then the spaceships? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And that's where the superheroes come to be after a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh. What? Can I just tell you, you did what? such an amazing job. What? Wow. That's really, really, really intense. Um, my eyes were um, going kind of doing this. Yes, yes, yes. And like there was like this light bulb right in here. I can't figure Really? Out. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Sometimes people will say, were you holding a light up to my eyes? I'm like, no. <laughs> No, that's just the energy. That's just all the stuff that's happening. That, oh my gosh! What do you that's remember cool. about that um, that group that was coming through you? The group. And at, at a certain point, this this kind of energy just went all over me, and and that is when this other energy stepped in, and now. Um, and that's 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 the voice that stayed the whole time i don't know it was okay. just a very slight but very very clear shift okay in cool. energy were you aware of the information you were giving through that yes that's amazing very cool um so so you as they um first um called yourselves the ones who oversee the development of human consciousness yes then we had a little bit of lesson about um, time. Yes. And creating time and why. Oh my goodness. Um, 11th dimensional beings. Yeah. <laughs> they so they say. Yeah. I, do you know, yeah, I know. I remember they said, you know, when I come out of this, I'm going to be angry. Like, I'm going to be like, duh. I mean, I, all this, I know. I know all this. This is this is stuff. This is bull. I've told myself like my fairy right stories. Right, right. But, but this so is why it, it needed to happen this it, way. Right. That, that it's, it's you're not making to, it up. Mm -hmm. 
it's all real. And that was your question, right? <laughs> Is it that, this, or something really else, right? interesting. Isn't it so amazing? Um, may I please go?